Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. And in the previous video, I just covered the basics of the binary number system. So to do that, I first started by discussing the decimal system or base 10, which is what we're used to using in day-to-day -day life. And then I use that as a sort of bridge to help us jump into the binary system or base two, which is what our computers use. Now in doing that, we were really just focusing in on what's known as the unsigned representation. So we weren't accounting for positive or negative values, but you could really just imagine that everything was a positive number. I also mentioned that in some cases we did want to account for negative values, and I said that that would require the use of a separate system, which I'm going to go over today. And really, that just requires us to make a slight adjustment to our understanding of binary that we learned in the previous tutorial. So first thing I'm going to do is jump back to this slide and when we discussed the primitive data types in Java we had said that any number we represent is going to by default be of type int and an int is a 32-bit signed value in Java and we also have the byte short and long which are 8 16 and 64 bits respectively but they're also signed and they use the twos complement representation so what does all of this mean? Well, in some cases, we don't really care about whether something is positive or negative. And one example would be when we assign IP addresses to a computer. In that case, we're using 32 bits or four separate bytes to address our computers over the network. And so with that, we have IP addresses in the range of 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0. Each of these between the dots is a separate byte and the maximum values for each of these bytes is of course 255, 255, 255, 255. In that case we're just using unsigned so we get the use of all eight bits to represent our decimal converted values. Now if we wanted to actually accommodate for negative values again we have to use this twos complement representation. In that case, what we're doing is reserving the leftmost bit as our sign bit. So in the case of a byte, which uses 8 bits, we're saying that the 8th bit, the leftmost bit, is our sign bit, and the right 7 bits are going to be used to denote the actual decimal value. If we had an int, again, the 32nd bit, the leftmost bit, is our sign bit and then the 31 bits to the right of it would be used to represent the actual numerical value. So we're actually losing one placement to account for number values and in that case what we're saying is we're gonna be cut down to the range of 128 negative through 127 positive. The reason these two don't match up exactly is because we're actually lumping zero into the positive range and we don't need to represent it two times. So we do have to represent one as positive one and negative one, but zero can just be lumped into the positive side once and then we don't have to worry about it. So we actually end up with negative 128 through negative one and zero through positive 127. Now the way this works, our sign bit when it is zero, says that whatever follows to the right is going to be a positive number. And if our sign bit is a one, that means whatever follows to the right is going to be a negative value. So we start with all zeros. And as we said, this is the value zero. And since this is a zero and a sign bit, it lumps zero as a positive number. We start counting from the right. One, two, and we add bits as we go, like we learned in the last tutorial. And when we get to this bit pattern here, we know this is positive 127. Now in normal unsigned representation, our next value up would be a one followed by all zeros. And we would say that that would be 128. But in fact, it's not. In this case, we're saying it is negative 128. The reason for that again is because we have a one representing our sign whenever it's a one it's a negative value and we start with the smallest negative value 
did I say that right? The, the most negative value. And as we increase by one each time, we're going to increase this value by one each time. So if we do that, and then if we were to actually add another one, we're adding one to this, which means it's getting smaller and smaller until we get back to this bit pattern, which is negative one. Now, of course, in this case, if you add one more to this, all of these would go to zero and we don't have another bit here, so this would be zero. A quicker way to convert between these is to take whatever the value is, get the bit pattern, and then invert all of the bits so that you take all zeros and make them one, and take all ones and make them zero. And then after you do that, you want to add one at the rightmost bit. So here's a quick website that you can use to verify all of these and kind of get a feel for whether you're doing this math right if you want to test it out. And we'll do one example now. So let's say you had the decimal value 28. The first thing you want to do is get the bit pattern. So here's the bit representation of the decimal value 28, positive. And we said the first thing that we wanted to do is, looks like I lost some of this here. There we go. First thing we're going to do is invert all of the bits. So whenever you see a 0, make it a 1. And whenever you see a 1, make it a 0. Once you finish doing that, the second step is to add one at the rightmost column. So we do that and we do our normal addition like you would in any other math class. And in this case, since you can't have two, because this is binary, so we do one and one gives us zero, carry the one. One and one gives us another zero, carry the one. In that case, you can just drop the one down. And let me just bring this down a little further. this would be your result, we can see we have a 1 in the sign bit, so we know this is a negative value, and then this bit pattern gives us negative 28 decimal. If you, again, wanted to double check this, just go to this website and put in negative 28, and you should get this representation, or you can start with 28, put it in there, you'll get this bit pattern, and flip all your bits, add 1, and you should get back to this. And the final thing that I'll just leave you with is that with 8 bits, 2's complement, we can do this range here, which we said was negative 128 to positive 127. With 16 bit, 2's complement, we get this range here. With 32 bit, 2's complement, we get this range, which is about negative 2.1 billion to positive 2.1 billion. And this is what the default int type in Java uses. And if you need any number larger, I'm sorry, smaller than this or larger than this, you would just bump up to the 64-bit twos complement representation, which in Java is the type long. So that pretty much covers everything, at least in terms of theory. So if we wanted to test all of this out in an actual program, one thing we could do is if we open up Eclipse, create a new project, and we'll just name this binary, and then open it up and make a new class file, and I'll just name this my binary.java. We'll make our class declaration, so public class my binary, and then declare our main method. So public static void main string. So let's just stick with using bytes for now. And in Java, if you want to explicitly use a byte representation, we have to use casting. So let's make a byte called a. And by default, let's say we wanted to make it of the value 7. Well, in this case, it allows it, but 7 is being initially interpreted as an integer. So usually what you're going to want to do is use casting, which is what I've done here with this parentheses, to say that 7 is going to be interpreted as a byte and stored into this variable a. 
Now the reason you want to do that, let me just erase this really quickly. Let's say we wanted to do 7 plus 5, which is 12, and store it in there. Interesting, it's not actually giving me an error. Usually it does. At any rate, you probably want to use the casting anyway. But um, another thing that we can do is instead of using our decimal values, we can explicitly state the bit pattern that we want to store. And to do that, we want to use binary. So the shortcut for that is 0, lowercase b. And all this is saying is whatever follows to the right is going to be a binary bit pattern. Now, let's just go back to our slide really quickly. And we'll use the same example that we had. So let's say we want to represent the decimal value 28 positive. We'll use this bit pattern. So 00011100. So here we'll do 00011100. And then finish with our semicolon. And just to see what that did, we'll do a print statement and just print out whatever the value of our variable is. And we get 28. Now one thing that might help you to break this up a little bit, you can use underscores to break up this pattern. And I guess you can't use it right in the beginning. but this really just helps you to kind of separate or group these together because otherwise they start to blur together, especially in this case we're only using 8 bits, but if you're using an int and you had all 32 bits lined up, they all start to kind of blend together. So the underscore doesn't really get red, it just helps you to separate them into, let's say, groups of four. So now again, we had said in order to make it negative, what we wanted to do was invert, so I'll do that first, which is we have one 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 zero 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 one one, and then we said we wanted to add one at the most rightmost bit, so we add our one here. These two become zeros, and now if I print out my variable b, we get negative 28. So you can just start messing around with actual binary bit patterns using this 0b to explicitly state your bit mask that follows. And that pretty much just covers uh, everything we need to know about the 2's complement representation we're going to actually start using all of this a little bit further when we discuss how the bitwise functions work and what they actually do. So stay tuned and check out the next video.